So here's a few little extra details on branching, uh, but I want to remind you to begin with that you are testing the opposite condition uh, when you are doing a branch in assembly language, because you're testing to decide whether to skip something rather than testing to decide whether you want to do something. And this is, again, a place where a lot of people get confused, so it's worth reiterating. There are two ways to test for the opposite condition. Either set the opposite condition and branch if true, or set the real condition and branch if false. So there's no real sort of, um, you can't memorize this. You just have to practice it because there's a lot of different cases of how this is going to work. And by the way, this is why we have a zero register because we're often going to be testing against a register that we set to being one or zero using a set instruction. Uh, so this is pretty common process. So practice, practice, practice. Uh, there are pseudo instructions that allow you to combine a set and a branch. And I believe these are also on the sheet. Um, yeah, we have branch if equal and branch. Yeah, here we go. So these branch, these pseudo instructions are on the sheet. But don't forget that they translate into two real instructions, and that can change the efficiency of your code. Uh, so we can branch less than, branch greater than, branch less equal, branch greater equal. And these are equivalent to a set and a branch, whether we're setting in these registers in one order, right? RS, RT, RT, RS. So the order of the registers that we change, the order of the registers that we compare, and whether we're branching on not equal or equal. And those are the four different possibilities, right? We compare RSRT and branch not equal. We compare RTRS and branch not equal. We can compare RTRS and branch on equality. And we can compare on RSRT and branch of equal. So those pseudo instructions exist, and you can make use of them, unless in the instructions of the assignment, I tell you not to. So then we have things like loops. Uh, most of the examples that I gave here were for conditionals, but loops are more or less the same thing, just instead of branching forward, you branch backward. And again, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can, if you're doing a while loop, the first thing you should do is test the condition, and then branch to the end of the loop, out of the loop, breaking out of the loop, uh, if the condition is met. And then if the condition is not met, or opposite, whatever you're doing for your condition, if the condition... Uh, succeeds in order to keep you in the loop, then you do your loop content, whatever it is, and then you always jump back to the top of the loop, conditional jump back to the top of the loop. If you do your condition at the bottom of the loop, you're doing a do while. So don't forget the difference between while and do while and for loops and practice writing them. So I'm going to give you lots of examples of practice how to write those loops. It's very important to be careful to test for what you're wanting to test for when you're doing your loops. And it's also really important to test for what we call fall through. Uh, that means that if your test, if your branch fails, then you do the next instruction regardless. There's no checking after that. There's no um, condition around that instruction. Every instruction is completely independent. Once you've done your branch, your program counter has been updated, and you're going to do the instruction that's at your program counter. And if you haven't updated your program counter, it's still where it was, which means you're doing the instruction after the branch. And we call this fall through. Right? If there's no jump instruction after a conditional clause, it's just going to fall through to the next instruction. And this is a common place where people make mistakes. It's worth experimenting with do whiles, with breaks, and with continues. Uh, you've done all of 110, and many of you have done most of 115 now. So you have access to and experience with all of these higher level um, control flow. Try them in assembly language to see what the assembler has to do to take um, a program flow that you write and convert it into assembly. And this will give you some idea of the efficiency or inefficiency of some of these different structures. So uh, an example, and again, this is an example that you're having to do uh, for your assignment on Friday, um, is a switch case. Here's an example of a fairly complicated switch case that's worth looking at. And I'll post some videos of some examples of some of these structures as we go.